Hey everyone, welcome back. It is time once again to take another look at the upcoming new PC releases, this for the month of November 2021. There are a lot of big budget titles coming out this month. Uh, if you're a fan of FPS, we have a new Call of Duty as well as a new Battlefield on the way. There's also a dinosaur theme park management game, some updated versions of a couple of classics. Yes, this includes a new version of Skyrim, I kid you not. We've also got a few interesting looking indie titles like this procedurally generated island an adventure, a Honey I Shrunk the Kids style survival, and a run-based zombie roguelike. And then if you like fast cars, there's a new game with fast cars. Before we get into this month's list though, let's get a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. I'm sure you've heard of this before. It's the service that delivers ready to cook meals to your doorstep. They recently sent me a meal. I got this saucy pork burrito bowl. It came in a paper bag and inside were all the ingredients, a pepper, onion, tomato, lime, cilantro, rice, red pepper crema, Tex-Mex paste, as well as some ground pork. Also included was this large card with a picture of the dish, list of ingredients, and some cooking instructions on the back. It was all simple and easy to follow. I cooked the rice, chopped the veggies, made the salsa, cooked the veggies, then the pork, and I was done. It was super simple to do, and the food came out tasting great, honestly. It was delicious. And I think what I enjoyed most, though, was just not sitting around and coming up with ideas for what to cook for dinner tonight, and then taking the time to go to the grocery store and pick up all of the individual ingredients. Uh, the other nice thing is that they send everything perfectly portioned for your meal. So you're not buying like an entire thing of seasoning if you only need a teaspoon of it, which I've done plenty of times in the past. Now, currently HelloFresh is offering a wide range of fall themed flavors. If you're in the mood for say some pumpkin cinnamon rolls or apricot pecan biscuits or spice lattes. Um, I've had a couple of different HelloFresh meals at this point. They all tasted great. Uh, frankly, I'm looking forward to trying some more. Now, if you're interested in trying HelloFresh yourself, you can go to hellofresh.com and use the code force 14 this will get you 14 free meals as well as free shipping okay so now let's go ahead and jump in to check out the 10 best new looking pc games to play in november 2021 first the triple a fps franchise that gets a new installment every single year is launching its latest entry this month i'm talking about call of duty vanguard this will be taking the series back to world war ii with a few modern day adjustments like like uh, attachments on weapons that never had them, as well as skins, because of course there's going to be skins. Uh, the single player campaign will be taking players through some influential battles of the war in the Eastern and Western fronts of Europe, the Pacific and North Africa, while playing from the perspective of multiple different characters. Uh, it appears like the usual Call of Duty campaign formula. Although honestly, most of you probably don't care about this because the last time I looked, completion rates for Call of Duty campaigns were around like less than 30% of the total total player based. Most people seem to look forward to the multiplayer and zombies. So on the multiplayer front, Vanguard will be launching with 20 maps on day one, which apparently is the most in Call of Duty history. 16 of those maps will cover the core multiplayer experiences and modes, while the remaining four are the close quarter maps featured in Champion Hill, this round robin limited life deathmatch mode. Vanguard also introduces patrol mode, which is a new take on hardpoint with moving objectives that travel across the map. There's some new gunplay mechanics in the game like blind fire. There are destructible walls, windows, and doors. They're really excited about this even though it's been in a lot of FPS games in recent memory. There's also custom ballistics and plenty of weapon customization, which again includes things like red dot sights on World War II weapons. Not exactly historically accurate, although um, is anyone really expecting historical accuracy from Call of Duty in 2021? I gather a bulk of college player base gives exactly zero craps about this. I know there are some vocal complaints out there, but most people don't seem to care. Uh, also, we can't forget zombies. Uh, this is developed by Treyarch and the mode aims to deliver plenty of replayability as you fight through hordes of zombies in uh, several World War II themed locations. Now on their website, it was interesting because I saw that they were touting next generation visuals specifically for the game's multiplayer. And uh, I don't know, dude, like <laughs> the stuff that I've seen looks okay, but I wouldn't call it a breathtaking visual fidelity as they put it. I mean, it's all right. It looks fine. And I know this might sound a little nitpicky. I just feel like if you're going to list the uh, visuals as a high point, it better look great at a glance. And it's not exactly the impression that I got. This is not the best looking FPS, especially for something the caliber of Call of Duty, but it's fine. Visuals are far from the most important thing. A game doesn't need to be the best looking for me to enjoy it. Uh, they just need to be fun to play. Uh, honestly, Warzone is one of my most 
most played FPS games in these past few years. I absolutely fell in love with it when it came out in 2020 and I played pretty obsessively for a couple of months. It was just so good. If anything, I'm really interested in seeing what changes happen to Warzone with this new uh, setting of World War II coming through Vanguard. I am really keen to see more about that. But the base version of Call of Duty, it seems fine. It's gonna be another Call of Duty. There's new things to check out and stuff. I, and Vanguard will be launching on the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on November the 5th for $59.99. Next up, we've got Jurassic World Evolution 2. This is the sequel to 2018's dinosaur theme park management game that had you controlling the operations of a Jurassic Park. Basically, you would construct a park while balancing things like the scientific research, entertaining guests, and maintaining security. So you could bioengineer dinosaurs and giving them like unique behaviors, traits, and appearances, and then you would put them on display, earning a profit to fund further research as well as to expand your park. The game offered various different types of management, construction, and then reactive tools for dealing with any threats, usually from dinosaurs escaping from their pens. And now the sequel of the game looks to build upon that original. So it's going to have a narrative campaign that takes place after the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and you'll have to work alongside characters from the films and try to control, conserve, and contain some of the wild dinosaurs that started rampaging across the US. They're going to have deeper management tools and options, they say. Uh, apparently, you can construct new customizable buildings, hire new scientists. There's going to be a sandbox mode for like a carefree setting to do all of this, but also a challenge mode where you will deal with these diverse locations and various environmental hazards in addition to everything else that you have to do. And then also they're constructing these what if scenarios uh, from the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park films. These will be levels set across eras and locations from all five movies, but like alternative scenarios basically that you'll have to try to manage and figure out. The game is going to have over 75 prehistoric species that preside over territory, fight for dominance and react to the world around them. And you'll get to use bioengineering to customize these dinosaurs with things like new colors. You can alter their genomes to unlock new unique traits. The original game was fairly well regarded. Steam reviews are quite good actually. So it looks like expectations are pretty high for this sequel. So if you're into park management simulation games, this may be one to keep an eye on. Jurassic World Evolution 2 comes to the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on November 9th for $59.99. Cars go fast, cars look good, and there's an open world. That basically sums up my knowledge of Forza games. Despite that though, uh, next on our list is Forza Horizon 5. I, I have to admit the game looks really good. It's going to be set in this vibrant open world landscape of Mexico where you can explore deserts, jungles, cities, ruins, beaches, canyons, and snow-capped volcanoes, all in this big seamless open world. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, the campaign is going to have hundreds of different challenges with rewards. You'll meet uh, new characters and get to choose the outcome of their stories. There are weather events like dust and tropical storms. They're going to have dynamic seasons that change the world weekly, continuously adding new events, challenges, collectibles, rewards, and areas to explore. You'll be able to team up with other players and enter what's called the Horizon Arcade for a continuing series of challenges that keep you in the action. No menus or loading screens or lobbies. You'll also just encounter other people as you explore the open world. And then they say here that they have this new Event Lab gameplay tool set that will let you build custom races, challenges, stunts, as well as entirely new game modes. Forza Horizon 5 comes to the PC X and the Xbox on November 9th for $59.99. It's been a while since I've been into racing games, but I gotta say, I recently have really, really enjoyed Riders Republic, so maybe I would like this. I think the last racing game that I was really into was like the Dirt series, and I do remember having fun with them. It's just, it's been a while since I've touched anything racing based, but I could see myself enjoying this. And yes, like always with car games, it looks gorgeous. Like cars are always, that's every time there's like a new graphics engine or a new console, they're like, here's our car game and the the water reflections on the tires or something. I don't know. The Forza Horizon 5 looks cool. Next up, we've got this game called Breakwaters, a really unique looking survival title that is all about exploring these procedural islands in this world as you scavenge for resources and try to find ways to deal with the threat of these massive titans. What looks most interesting about this game though are its various mechanics for interacting and dealing with water. So there are these special crystals that you can use to displace water, which will, will like open up new paths and locations, giving you access to things like rare resources. You can also construct walls to hold water back, preventing waves from say, destroying your home, or even re 
redirecting water, turning what was previously a valley now into a lake. They say that there's over 360 square kilometers of ocean to explore in this game, filled with unique procedurally generated islands, a ton of different biomes, various creatures and people, as well as resources. There's also going to be a dynamic time of day and weather systems in the game. Now, aside from playing around with water and exploring, it does look to be a standard survival game. You'll be going out, gathering resources, and using them to build structures and items. You can craft gear to suit various play styles, like you could be a farmer, an explorer, or an adventurer. You'll also be able to build and customize various types of boats to help you handle the rough waters, any local enemies, as well as the titans. And this is another big element here. These are massive creatures that roam around the world, causing all sorts of damage and mayhem. There are multiple types of titans, like the turtle, which is found in the ocean and causes these massive waves that can wash over islands, carrying away anything in their path. The serpent, which is found near storms and causes large whirlpools, which will suck anything into it. And then there's the crab that can walk up onto dry land and attack humans and buildings. It seems like one of the main objectives in this game is to survive, but also to eliminate these titans, which will then bring calm to the world and the seas. And I just love to see when games try something new. It's not like interacting with water and fluids has never been done before in a game, but you don't see it quite have the emphasis that it appears to have in this game very often. This looks like it could be a fun indie title to tinker around with. Uh, it is going to be launching into Steam Early Access on November 11th. There is no price at the moment. There's a couple of Early Access titles on this list. As always, you know, it's one of those things where only buy into it if you're interested in trying out this early iteration of the game. It, it, don't expect a completed uh, uh, product. It's not what you're going to be getting here. Now moving on, we go from an indie title into one of the most popular video game franchises in history, GTA. The Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive Edition launches this November. This includes Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas, each enhanced and updated for a new generation. Now this means things like GTA 5 inspired modern controls, across the board visual enhancements with resolution upgrades and improved fidelity, and various other improved improvements to all three games while trying to maintain their distinct original aesthetic. So this will be coming to the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch on November 11th. It's also going to be included in Xbox Game Pass, uh, so big win for Xbox there. That's a pretty pretty sweet deal, honestly. I can't believe I'm about to say it, but yes, believe it or not, there's another version of Skyrim coming out this month. This is the 10th anniversary edition. It's going to include all content from the base game, Dawnguard, Hearthfire, and Dragonborn expansions, along with 74 Creation Club mods which apparently amount to around 500 new elements, including things like new quest items, armor, houses, and more. This is admittedly a lot of new stuff if you haven't played or purchased anything beyond the base original 2011 release of the game. Now, if you do already own the special edition of Skyrim, which came out in 2016, you're going to receive three free pieces of the Creation Club content. That is the fishing, survival, as well as new quest with saints and seducers. Outside of that, though, you'll have to purchase this new anniversary edition if you want the rest of that stuff or you know you could probably just download some mods I'm guessing and get a lot of stuff I don't know I've lost track at this point of how many re-released versions of Skyrim we're currently at it's got to be over five right I can't say I'm surprised that there's another one coming but as much as I love Skyrim at this point I'm just looking forward to the Elder Scrolls 6 so we can finally move on I'm so sick of tired <laughs> tired of talking about new Skyrims coming out so the Skyrim 10th, 10th anniversary edition if you do want to buy it it's coming to the PC PlayStation and Xbox on November 11th. I haven't seen a price yet probably going to be 40 to $60. Next on our list is The Last Stand Aftermath. This is an isometric single player rogue light action adventure game. Set in a zombie apocalypse, you will be playing as a recently infected in search of hope for your fellow survivors. So you'll go out and explore the ruins of cities and towns, finding fuel to travel to new locations and gathering supplies to craft weapons and items, all while fighting back hordes of zombies. The kicker, as I mentioned, is that you're 
infected. So you will eventually die either at the hands of the zombie hordes or to the virus itself. Now, when that eventually happens, you'll then get to select a new survivor, getting perks and upgrades that are earned based on how far you progressed with your last survivor, and then you will set out to try again, pushing further and further. Some of the game's made features include the ability to sneak or fight your way through various dangerous encounters. You have that option of stealth or aggressive gameplay. You'll be scavenging for materials to craft things like weapons and supplies. You'll engage with hordes of various types of infected enemies, some of which will have special abilities. You can even risk undeath yourself by using these powerful mutations that will make you stronger but push you closer to death. And then as I mentioned, when one survivor dies, you start up again. That's the roguelike elements and having access to these uh, perks and unlocks based on how far you progressed previously. The game looks genuinely very cool. I really like what I've seen. I think the premise of a roguelike zombie survival game where you're trying to progress further and further with each run while up against the clock of being infected in addition to the threat of those zombies, that all sounds super cool. So I hope the gameplay ends up being good because I do love the idea here. The Last Stand Aftermath will be coming to the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on November 16th. Unfortunately, no price on this one at the moment. Next up is Battlefield 2042. This is a game that I feel a lot of people were super excited for until they played the recent test. Uh, feedback from that event was predominantly negative, it seemed, more, more so than usual, with the uh, major complaints including the game's performance as well as the uh, new class design system, the specialist, and map design from the one map we had access to. Now, I played it. I had an okay time. You know, I ran around shooting things. There was a, it was hectic. There was a lot going on. It was a battlefield game to me. Although I did experience quite a few performance issues myself. I'm running on a 3080 and I have an i7 11700K. I assumed I would have been in the clear for performance issues, but I was not. I had lots of frame drops and a bit of chugging uh, throughout the event. But anyway, in terms of the game itself, what is in it? Well, 2042 includes a lot of things. So there is the, gonna be the conquest mode, which is the large scale 128 player battle sandbox, as well as breakthrough, where you've got those attackers and defenders fighting over key locations. Both of those modes will be played on a variety of new massive maps to support this huge player count. Again, 128 players. There's gonna be lots of dynamic events and weather that you're gonna have to deal with, new weapons and vehicles, as well as this new specialist system, which is replacing the traditional class system in Battlefield. This particular change is where a lot of complaints have come from. People just don't like the new specialist compared to how they handled classes before. I don't know that this is gonna change though, so this might just be something we deal with until maybe a major patch, who knows? But outside of these two modes, 2042 has a few other very interesting offerings. So first, there is Portal. This basically brings updated versions of classics, 1942, Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. This means a return of a lot of the fan favorite maps with modern high definition quality, along with the various weapons, vehicles, and gear from those games. There's gonna be custom modes launching with the game, but also the ability for players to create their own unique experiences, being able to mix and match elements of all these different games with this new builder tool. All of it sounds super cool, taking some of this classic stuff that people really love about the Battlefield franchise, and not only make, bringing it to modern day, but also giving people the tools to tinker with it sounds awesome. And then there's also this thing called Hazard Zone, which uh, has four member squads uh, going out and attempting to locate and retrieve these data drives scattered around a battlefield, all while fighting opposing squads doing the same thing. In order to win in this, you basically have to gather as, uh, the data drives and then try to extract before the storm overtakes the map. Now also, this is like a high stakes one life game mode. Oh, this sounds also really, really cool. I think if it wasn't for the fairly poor experience that I had with the test a few weeks ago, I would say this is probably my most anticipated game of this month. So with that said, I really hope that they can iron out the performance issues. Maybe, you know, it was supposed to be an earlier build, so hopefully that is just the answer and the most recent builds don't have quite as many performance issues as what we experienced. Um, it's still high on my list though, because both Portal and Hazard Zone sound like something I would really, really like. So Battlefield 2042 is coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on November 19th. This one for $59.99. Next up is Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. This is the game's fourth official expansion, bringing with it a continuation of the main story and conclusion to the narrative arc of A Realm Reborn, along with a host of new expansion content, everything you expect from an MMO.
MMO. Uh, there's a couple new classes. We've got the Sage, this aggressive healer that has lots of damaging skills in addition to its protection through these barriers. There's also the Reaper, a melee DPS that has combo attacks and this unique demon form. Beyond new classes, there are updates to all of the existing classes with some brand new abilities and changes to various rotations, as well as a raise to the level cap. And there are, of course, going to be numerous brand new zones coming. We've got new dungeons and trials. There's this island sanctuary, as well as some quality of life changes, including a stat squish. And Walker will be coming to the PlayStation and PC on November 23rd for $39.99. I would really like to dive into this expansion. I just don't know if it's going to be possible. Uh, I still don't have a max level character in this game. I have not invested the apparently hundreds of hours it's going to take to go from a fresh start to the end. I have uh, dabbled with uh, Final Fantasy XIV over the years, but never really committed to it and never stuck with it long enough to get anywhere near the end game. So I am so far uh, beyond being able to experience this expansion. Unfortunately, it seems like Final Fantasy XIV will continue to take a back seat for me. And then the final game on this month's list is called Small Land. Do you remember Grounded? Well, this looks just like that game, but a bit less cartoony. Uh, you play as a tiny fairy-like creature trying to survive the wilderness. So it is a survival game at the core. You will scavenge for resources, craft weapons and armor, build these encampments, and explore the wilderness that is chock full of dangerous enemies. Uh, some of the game's features include a huge open sandbox world for you to explore from your tiny perspective. You will build bases and shelters with a host of various upgrades and customizations. There's going to be lore and a story behind the world of Small Land as well, a bunch of hidden NPCs scattered around the world for you to discover. It's got dynamic weather and random events that are organically creating these hazardous situations. Player upgrades and customizations, you can earn and unlock new abilities. There's also factions, you can work alongside other creatures to gain their trust, earn allies and mounts. And then finally, the game has solo, PvE, as well as PvP gameplay. I was not expecting that. That is a feature that last I played Grounded was not in that game. Grounded was more about a cooperative Honey, I Shrunk the Kids style adventure. Looks like Small Land is going to include some competitive nature to it as well. I really like the look of this, honestly. I, I am very, very hopeful that this plays well. It's hard to tell. This is going to be a Steam early access launch, so the same disclaimer that early access games always get. But I'm happy to jump into early access titles just because if something looks interesting and I want to try it, I'll try it as soon as I can, really. You know, I mean, you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed, right? So <laughs> I'm going to jump in and try Small Land, I think. It is supposed to come out in November, although the exact date is to be determined at the moment. Okay, so those are the 10 best looking uh, list of new PC games coming out this month couple of other titles though I want to quickly mention as I usually do. First up is this game called Giants Uprising launching on November 2nd. In this game you play as a giant. Usually you're playing as the humans and the giants are these dangerous terrible things you got to take down right? That's like every RPG ever. No you're the giant. Humans suck. Destroy their city and try to escape. That's the idea here. Uh, the other game is Clunky Hero. This is a Steam early access launch on November the 9th. It is a story driven Metroidvania platformer. This looks super clean really Really sharp. I like the aesthetics. The gameplay looks good. If you're into side scrollers, I know not everybody is, but if you like side scrollers, this looks like it could be a good one. On November 16th, we're seeing the official launch of Hammer Ting, a game where you manage a dwarven mining colony. This has really good early access reviews. Not a ton of reviews, but they are mostly positive, so that's good. Keep my eye on this one. And then finally, I wanted to mention Undungeon. This is an RPG with real time action combat and this sci fi story where you travel between dimensions. I've been hearing quite a bit of buzz about this one, so that's why it made the list. Uh, this one's coming out on November 18th. And with that, we will wrap up this month's list of the 10 best looking new PC games to play. As always, thank you guys so much for the support. Hope you've been enjoying the videos. I am making a concentrated effort to try to follow up with these lists and make full coverage of a lot of these games. It's almost impossible to play 10 games in a month and really like get too deep into them, but I want to at least pick a handful of the games that I uh, talk about that are coming every month and try to do some sort of coverage on them. So keep an eye out for that going forward. Um, we'll see exactly how I'm going to structure the content. I think it would be literally impossible to do 10 full reviews, like to get the time to play all those games, but maybe some first impressions or some general thoughts after some playtime. That's the idea. That's the game plan. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah, that does it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Take it easy.